in the big universities of today, the community of the university itself has become as big as a city, as a big city. Universities of 20 to 30,000 students do no longer represent universities at all, but represent cities. The modern university, big metropolitan universities, have merged figure and ground, university and community, in what is, in effect, a monstrous situation. When you merge the figure and the ground, you have a monster. King Kong is the image of modern man's service environments stretching out to such size that they crush him. King Kong is our own man-made environment stepping on us. Well, what has happened, obviously, in our very, very highly developed universities in this um, in North America is that they have broken down almost completely through complexity and specialism. The unity of knowledge disappeared a long time ago. And um, the cry on the part of the young today for relevance in their studies is a cry for this wholeness again. And I suggest that the way to get back to wholeness is by problems and not by knowledge, by ignorance and not by information. If you go to the expert and ask, what is the main hang-up in your field? What is the area on which you are completely baffled? He will have to tell you, first, what is the kind of information he had that led him to this impasse? And then he'll say, here is where we're stuck. Now, for most people, to know where the top experts are stuck is a privilege. Most experts are very unwilling to explain these matters. I think, though, if you begin with the breakdown as resource, as the major area of opportunity, by flipping the whole learning process around that way toward problems rather than toward the consuming of information, the entire relevance of learning comes back into focus instantly. Mm -hmm. So that you really would see an opportunity here to create an entirely I, new type of I think university. the possibility of pattern recognition of the understanding of the whole business of a university in relation to human community would be much easier at the University of Canada North than it is here at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Enormously easier. At the University of Toronto, in order to understand the function of a university in relation to the whole city, is almost unimaginable. In the first place, who's going to understand the university in all its divisions and, and services? Who is going to understand the city in all its problems and diversity of activities and services? You can see well, one huge pattern stepping up today. The government is taking over the university as a service environment for itself. University of Canada North is going to be at least free from any of the pressures from business and government. The big universities in the big areas today are almost entirely used as services for big business and big government. And this, of course, is totally defeating of the business of learning on the part of the students. It de deprives the student of the dialogue, the bull sessioning that should be his privilege, the feeling of being in a leisure environment where you can have full access to the total patterns of knowledge. I think that in a, an environment like University County North, the main function of a university will come back into focus again very rapidly. Yes. With a board and a, and a, and a staff and a, a student group of such relatively manageable proportions. You are always within human scale in everything you do. And if you, as Kohler had said, if you want to acquire another man's knowledge, start with his ignorance. If you know where another man is hung up, you will more quickly acquire what he knows. This is the Sherlock Holmes approach. You pull out all the connections in order to concentrate on a problem. Instead of looking at all the possible things that had happened, you start where the thing ended. You start with the problem of who done it. You work back only from there, only as far as is necessary. You don't have to learn everything about everybody in order to find out who done it. But the point about a who done it is that you pull out the ordinary connections in order to involve the public in the learning process. If you want to involve people in the learning process, you have to pull out connections. 
or pull out the usual connectedness. Otherwise, they're going to follow those lines indefinitely. Uh, there isn't any subject on which you could not spend your entire life. And without ever exhausting the information available on that subject. If you want to become really involved in that subject, you have somewhere or other to discover where it is lacking in information, where it is definitely lacking in knowledge of itself, mm -hmm. and where it is definitely unable to help people to surmount certain problems. The, uh, for example, if you started to study medicine, uh, it would be best to start where are the areas of absolute ignorance in modern medicine. And uh, these are overwhelming mm -hmm. in number. Most people don't even know there are problems in highly learned fields. And usually, when a large audience of people hears about a problem, there's always somebody in the audience that says, but nobody told me that was a problem. I've known the answer to that all my life. Now, this really happens, that things which have baffled experts for decades may be perfectly obvious to some relatively ignorant person in the, in the, in the audience. Mm -hmm. well, some of the greatest discoveries ever made by man were made by as, for example, the unique discovery of the governing, the governor mechanism on a steam engine was made by an 11-year-old boy who was just too lazy to go on pulling the steam cock. And he decided to tie the string in his hand to the wheel uh, off, off the piston. And this is the, one of the biggest discoveries ever made. This is the discovery that is behind the modern computer. And it was made by a lazy 11-year-old kid who wanted to play marbles instead of pull the switch. And so this is merely, I think, an example of the possibilities of the public participating in the discovery process. Mm -hmm. I think with radio and television, the great mistake is to water down existing information and pass it out as packages for people who have been deprived of the opportunity of learning it elsewhere. Mm -hmm.